Welcome to the channel and World War Z. This is my walkthrough for the entire game and I'm starting obviously with episode one and New York and the first chapter of the New York episode, Descent. Now this actually sees us escaping from a building to the subway station where we make our escape. However, a few things to do along the way. So much like Left 4 Dead, and this may well be a nod to Left 4 Dead, we actually start on a rooftop. So I'm using the Gunslinger class, and I'll be using that all the way through this playthrough because I'm leveling it up. So I get to start with an LMG on my back, which is one of the uh, heavy weapons in the game. Now basically heavy weapons are one-use weapons. They run out once the ammo runs out. You have no replacement for them unless you find another one around the map. Zombies do have a habit of playing dead, so use your RB button to melee them. Basically, if they're not dead, you'll kind of stab into them on the floor with whatever you're using. I'm actually using the shovel, which is a pre-order DLC melee weapon. You'll always get a bunch of zombies around this corner in hard mode. I always start out with the LMG, the heavy weapon, in my gunslinger class because that allows me to down a lot of zombies very quickly. And like I said, you generally do get quite a good group of them come in there, normally about 20 to 30. And then after that kicks off, you'll get a few more try and come in through this door. Now, I'm playing this solo in hard mode. Now, you can actually play solo by going into co-op campaign and then literally just starting the game as a single player and choosing your character. So we're basically at the moment just navigating our way to a lift. Now like Left 4 Dead there are special zombies in the game. So you get these things called lurkers that will literally just lurk in a corner somewhere waiting to jump out on you when you least expect it. You also get these uh, zombies, armoured zombies called bulls, a kind of security guard type characters. Very hard to take down but very easy to kill from the rear. Uh, just taking down some more of these dudes here. There he is, there's a bull right now. So this guy, you can see his back there is exposed so it's very easy to uh, take him down from the rear there by just shooting that exposed area on his back. Now these crates you'll get anything from a weapon drop to health. The game is actually pretty good at giving you health packs when you need them. In fact thinking back predominantly you will get health packs probably about 70% of the time out of those instead of weapons. So in this area we've got a bit of a restock before said queued zombie shitstorm once I press that elevator button. Here we go. So the shotgun I'm using here is not massively powered up this shotgun. I've only got one upgrade on this. Now basically as you play through the game, take that guy out. I've got a lurker coming in on me there, took me down. The nasty little thing took a chunk of my health there. I'm actually trying to back into the elevator here, but I'm caught against something. So the elevator is open, so at this point, it will now teleport all of the AI into the elevator with me so that I can get on with the next part of the level. Obviously, if you're playing co-op, you're going to have to wait for all of your human players to step into the elevator before you can move on to the next section of the game. All of the guns in World War Z are maxed out at level 5. So basically, as you use various weapons during each of the levels, you'll get a certain amount of XP for each weapon depending on its usage during the level. Now eventually, as you unlock levels, you'll unlock upgrades and those upgrades include things like additional power, faster fire rate, better accuracy, that kind of stuff. Now I'm playing this hard solo because I wanted quite a good challenge but also I wanted to level up that little bit quicker and unlock some of these skill trees a bit faster. 
Initially I went in on this level, I played it on easy first time round and without any upgrades and stuff, it was a bit of a challenge, it wasn't dreadfully hard. Here we go, Horde Central, this is crazy. But, you know, it, it was manageable and I actually completed it I thought, well that, you know, it wasn't dreadfully difficult. So I'm going to jump into normal mode, which is how I played the rest of the game. And after completing normal mode, I thought there are probably one or two missions there that would be really tough at the next level. But 70-80% of those missions I felt quite comfortable. I could probably do them on hard. So I trashed all my original recordings and obviously this is me doing all of the levels hard now. So grenade packs are great once you... Well, one of the things I want to do as I'm leveling up this gunslinger mode is eventually at the end of the tree you get three grenades instead of two. The grenades can be quite good at taking down those balls and stuff if you get the grenade behind them. So now we're just going to press this button here, open up the lift and jump down the shaft. Now the rocket launcher you see on my back is another one of those heavy weapons. This is a single use weapon. So if you're going to use it, make sure you make the most of it. And one of the guys, the AI guys, got caught up there by one of those lurkers. Do keep an eye on your AI's health. As you can see, our netter's not looking very good there. Um, she's taken a bit of a beating and now this guy is as well. It's actually a lot easier to take these balls down from the rear with your melee weapon than it is shooting them. So if you can get in close to a ball and get in behind them, do it because it's the fastest way to take them down. Now these are defense materials that you get. You can only actually, it's weird, if you've got like a defense grid and a turret in I think in easy and normal you can actually pick up two but in <laughs> you tied up in the air but in this mode um, that was a gas guy by the way you get those as well they're one of the specials as well and as you can see it kind of emits a cloud does um, continual damage so you don't want to hang around in those clouds but uh, but yeah, with the hard mode, you can only actually pick up one piece of equipment at a time that's defense equipment, which is actually very painful. The other thing is, it only actually gives you enough as per you being a single player. Obviously, if they're four players, there's probably a lot more of this stuff lying around. But as a single player, you don't get much around the area at all. So... But at the same time, you probably get a lighter experience, I suspect. I've actually found, as I said, this quite manageable most of the time on normal without too many difficulties. This is my first run through on hard. So far, it's not been too hard. So I'm expecting I'll probably get through this. I might have the odd tough moment. But uh, in general, so far so good. I'm not finding it too hard. So I've come back up here for the other turret. So I can put that down. And then a refill of ammo. It's always smart to refill your ammo if you're in a position to chuck in some grenades there. Always shoot the base of the fences that the zombies are coming in at because that will make the whole pyramid they're climbing up topple. So it's a good way of stopping them getting to you. Can't shoot in that corner there. The glass is getting in the way. So I'm going to focus on the areas where I can hit low and do the most damage. So always aim at the base of the zombie tower if you like. That way they'll kind of topple over the top of each other and it'll give you a chance to take them out a lot quicker. So that zombies run to those guys. If a zombie runs past you, generally your AI teammates are going to deal with it. So if you're playing solo, Try not to worry about it too much. Obviously, if you're playing co-op, you can communicate to the other people you're playing with that one's got past you, and at least they'll know to expect it. So, so far, so good. I'm using the AK here. This AK was a pre-order bonus AK. So I think it's slightly better than the generic AK you get in the game. But this also has 
a upgrade tree as well. And the first few upgrades for this gun actually drop its stats before it starts raising them. So down into the subway now. We're going to try and catch a train here. Over the turnstiles. And then turn left. And now we've got to clear out the train station before we can go and talk to the train driver down below. Now this bit can get quite busy and hard. In the other modes I didn't find this too challenging. This beginning bit it's quite easy to kind of suppress the zombies and take them down very easily. In hard mode sometimes it's quite easy to get swamped. The other um, things I should probably mention about the game, the AI, uh, probably 80% of the way there in terms of they're respectable, 20% of the time they can do some really stupid stuff, they do tend to like to run in front of you and then complain about being shot in the head or shot in the back, which obviously if you're firing your gun at the time they walk in front of you there's not a whole lot you can do about that. The other thing is they tend to like to move in front of you if you move out of position, they tend to gather on your position which can be a little annoying sometimes when you're trying to get you know some space from them. The other thing that obviously makes it difficult is you can damage your AI colleagues by shooting them as you can human you know colleagues if you're playing online so do bear that on mind if, you know if you're playing online you can hurt your teammates so definitely be careful how you shoot this is going to be quite a tough game i think online to play and not upset other people because you do have some quite kind of narrow corridors to shoot things and obviously you always get those people that want to kill everything and be in front all the time now there is a crouch button you can press the b button and that will actually allow you to drop low so people can shoot over the top of you. Now, in hard mode, you actually need to get six supply crates. That one's a screamer, so that's another special. If you get one of those guys screaming, they enrage the zombie horde and you'll get more of them. And also, they tend to be a lot more aggressive. So you want to take those guys out as quickly as possible. We've got another bull in there. That's not good. Gonna give that guy a rocket launcher. That took him out quite nicely. And open the door. These are the supplies. Oh, it's full of zombies. Take these guys out. So basically, oh, give him a melee kill. Now we've got one of the crates here. As I said, these generally will drop you a weapon or a medikit. It is generally quite good at dropping you a medikit when you need one. I typically will use the medikit if I don't need it on one of my squad members to keep them alive obviously because if they die they're not a lot of good to me. Now with the supply crates you can only carry one at a time which means I've got to make six journeys up and down this you know, train platform in order to complete the level so it's pretty intense stuff and during the course of this we'll be going to be getting zombie hordes all over the place so let's drop the first one off we walk into the corner here press x now every time i come in i'm going to do a refill make sure i've got enough ammo i'm going to pick up the other rocket launcher just in case i get into some trouble with some bigger or specialist zombies up the stairs again I'm gonna go back into that room although to be honest this was a bit of a pain to get to this room it's quite a long way back I've got zombies on me already give that guy a grenade that lurker I'm not gonna play around with him oh we got another ball we've got a whoa not good oh, I'm getting poisoned and everything here this is really not good I haven't got any health at all literally got no health and I know that there's no health at the end of this corridor or in this area so that leaves me in quite a nasty predicament here so I'm going to pick up this other supply crate I've still got four more supply crates to get yet which is not great because obviously like I said I've got no health 
I can't remember if there was health in the train. Sometimes there is. So hopefully I'll be able to get some health in the train. But I'm definitely going to have to clear these zombies out. Otherwise I'm not going to make it. If I get hit once I'm down basically. Double check this room. Yeah, I didn't think there was anything in there. Take these guys down. This AK is actually quite a good weapon for taking um, the zombie horde out. I'm going to go in this room and cower while that uh, bulldozer is beaten on the AI. And that's the other thing. If the AI are too bunched together, you're better off just getting out the way of it. Unless they get in close with those guys. If those guys run in the room and the AI are in there, run out the room because they will shoot them and it will start gassing you and killing you. So I had that a couple of times where literally I was near, you know, I was near death and they shot gas guys right next to me, which obviously killed me instantly. So that is another thing the AI can do that's a little bit dumb sometimes. But in general, they are very good at picking you up most of the time. They're not so good at picking each other up, though, especially if it's an AI that you need for the mission and you need to escort, for instance, you know, someone that's important to the completion of the mission. They generally won't pick them up at all, which is really annoying sometimes. Get rid of that guy. I've got zombie hordes behind me. I'm going to let the AI deal with those. I really need to push on. Oh, no, they're coming out from under there. I really need to push on and get these supply crates. So I've got two more crates in here. Nice. Heavy weapon pick up there. As again, I said they're uh, single use weapons. This heavy machine gun's pretty good. If you press and hold the left trigger, you kind of go into a, a kneel down state where you can fire the gun. And that gives you a more accurate spread of bullets. But... Um, you can fire it standing like I am free firing. To be honest, it's just as accurate. I haven't seen a great deal of difference. Oh, lurker just crawled out of nowhere. And do try to remember where the lurkers come out because they do tend to keep coming out the same places. I've noticed a lot of the time. So once you get used to a map, even if you killed one on this playthrough, sometimes it'll actually spawn another one coming out of that vent again in the same place. I've had that quite a few times. So do be wary of that. So if you've seen a lurker there before, be prepared the next time you pass that particular section of the map again, because the game may have just decided to spawn another one. I nearly kneeled down there, but that wouldn't have helped me at all. Oh, he got wasted. I'm getting caught up on the back of the map and the AI here, they're stopping me seeing what's happening. I'm about to move a bit further forward so I can keep shooting. And again, I've got the bull in front of me. Okay, AI hey, have dispatched him. Cool. These zombies never ending. Hard mode, you definitely get a hell of a lot more zombies, and also the rushes of zombies are a lot more frequent. So you you know you, the pressure is on a hell of a lot more in hard mode. Now at this point, um, my AK is not upgraded at all. Actually, as I said, this was one of the pre-order DLC bonuses, so it's actually not a bad weapon in terms of damage. There you go. See, there's that lurker again. That was exactly where he was last time. So you will see that quite a bit. So you know, like I said, if you see one in a particular place. Check for it the next time before you run around the corner because chances are there'll be another one there waiting to jump on you. A quick refill. I've got four more, uh, sorry, two more to do. So I've got four zombies coming in the train here. There's some up the stairs. Oh, I'm going to have to go up the stairs. Sometimes you'll get them ground level. And obviously the ground level ones are a lot friendlier because they're a lot quicker to get to. And okay, these ones aren't too deep into this area, so that's not bad. So pick this one up. We can get this delivered. We've got one more to go. Oh no, not good. 
There's another special there somewhere. Oh no, it's another ball. There's two of them. Oh, this game doesn't like me. Nice one. The AI managed to get rid of them quite quickly. That could have been an end of game moment. Now I'm going to get moving because I've shot that gas guy in the area. I've repaid the AI for what they did to me earlier. <laughs> shot gas guy while they're in the room. To run, run into the train, drop this supply point off. Now the AI will literally stick to you like glue 95% of the time. They'll always be with you. So it's good and bad. Obviously it's good because they're sticking with you and shooting stuff, but sometimes obviously you want you've got areas to protect or two areas to protect for instance and you can't do both if you're doing it solo. So it'd be nice if you could kind of tell some of the AI to stay in a certain position. Um, I don't think that's a factor in the game at all. Not that I've seen. I haven't seen a control option to do that. So correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but I've not seen that as yet. It pretty much seems that, you know, it is what it is. So we've got all of the supply crates. I didn't actually press X on that last one. That last one kind of automatically went down, which was interesting. Because normally you have to press X for it to recognise. So I'm going to stand in the middle here because there's no windows for me to get hit by. So there you have it. Chapter 1, Episode 1. Descent in New York World War Z 4K capture with King Lizard. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you might find this useful as a walkthrough. In the event you like the video or enjoyed it in any way, maybe drop me a sub on the channel. Maybe like the video. Any support would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Take care. Keep well. Keep watching. And most importantly, come back soon.